Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. And today I'd like to share some of my thoughts on how the scientists in my field can contribute to addressing issues concerning conservation of uh, biodiversity, especially in river systems. Okay, <laughs> as we all know by today, we are facing the fastest uh, rate of species extinction at the global scale in modern society and modern history. And the freshwater ecosystems, including rivers, are one of the most endangered types of ecosystems on the planet. Okay, this figure came from the US, and as you can see, a greater proportion of a species are facing a risk of extinction compared to other types of ecosystems, such as terrestrial ecosystems, right? The reason is very simple. Okay, you can think of why the rivers are more sensitive to the human activities. They accumulate and they receive most of the impacts of our influences from the human activities that take place in upstream catchment areas, right? And uh, Japan is uh, also under great threat of biodiversity loss, and particularly because we have a high population density in such a small country at the global scale. So it is a great challenge for us to strike a good balance between the need of protecting nature and the need for development of land and also the prevention of disasters, right? So in this context, I am committed as a scientist to address three critical questions, right? The first, we need to know why and how species diversity or endangered species matter to us? The answer to this question would provide us a good logical reasons to invest money and time for protecting them. Secondly, we also need to know the root causes of environmental uh, uh, degradation. So with the knowledge about what is causing degradation, the managers or we can do a better job to come up with ways to fix the problems effectively and efficiently. Right. And third, we also need to know where the remaining important ecological functions exist in our uh, society, world. Right. Ecological functions refers to the processes that are important in maintaining populations of particular species. That's what I mean here. Right. With this information, we can uh, prioritize sites or locations that need to be conserved or protected with high priority so we can do a better job in our conservation or protection of nature. Right. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. So this is how we do our, our research. Um, so this will give you time. Right, so reading rivers, by which I mean understanding rivers, okay, uh, through the field based observations, that requires us to feel what the target organisms feel or to see what the target organisms to see. That way, we can better understand how the system works. Okay. And we also use almost anything that we believe would help us to read rivers, including not only fish, we also look at the bugs, insects, and plants, sediment, soil, and so on. And also a variety of uh, knowledge from different disciplines, including biology, uh, geomorphology, hydrology, hydraulics, would be very useful when reading rivers. So now I'd like to uh, introduce some uh, research results briefly, uh, corresponding to one, uh, one of each of uh, my critical questions. So firstly, I and my colleagues uh, tried to evaluate the cultural uh, benefits provided by rivers. So what we did is the, uh, we counted the number of people visiting uh, rivers for different purposes. Okay? And then at the same time, we counted the number of species of fish in each river 
we surveyed almost all large uh, river systems across our country, which was more than 100. And what we found is that uh, in rivers where we see uh, higher species richness of fish, there are more people using those places for different recreational purposes, such as fishing or for just uh, having fun. Okay. What this tells us is that uh, there's a chance that if we lose a species richness, then there's a risk that we're going to lose some uh, cultural benefits we receive from river systems. Right. So talking about the second example, this is about uh, freshwater mussels. Um, these mussels are one of the most endangered groups of organisms on the planet for many reasons. And the managers and we are very much concerned about how we can protect their habitat and how we can restore their habitat. But unfortunately, throughout the world, including Japan, uh, their habitat is shrinking substantially. And this is the um, one of the okay the um, typical habitat in Japan. What do you think about this river? Well, it has a green vegetation along water course, and the water quality is not very bad but their habitat is shrinking. Well, we try to find out what's going on in this river. And we required, we, we, we had to go back to the, the uh, condition in the past. So we have to look back the past condition to find out what was wrong with this river. So over the period of about 30 or 40 years, uh, the landscape level appearance changed substantially. Okay. Basically, we have more vegetation uh, now compared to the past condition, which may sound good to you, but it's not. Right. <laughs> the other way of looking at reading this river was looking at the topography of riverbed, okay, which cannot be easily seen from the ground. You have to go under the water. And what, what we found is the, uh, there's an unusual rate of erosion going on underwater, which cannot be explained by any natural processes. And this was about like 20 meters deep, which cannot happen in nature. So then putting all this information together, we came up with the uh, conceptual model and, uh, and also the scientific uh, uh, rigorous analysis. We concluded that um, construction of, the, of dams and also the abstraction, extraction of uh, sediments uh, from river channel in upstream area was the cause, main cause of the ecosystem degradation in downstream areas. Right. So with this kind of information, we and river managers now at least know what is causing the degradation. So there's a clue for what they can do to uh, restore or conserve or protect their habitat. Right. So third example, this is about uh, commercially valuable uh, species, salmon. Right. This is the life history of this salmon. Okay. They uh, hatch from the egg in rivers, and then they migrate down to the ocean. And after spending several years in ocean, they come back to lay their eggs again. This is their life cycle. Incubation period of eggs is critical for their uh, um, life cycle. And uh, water environment having a particular temperature is critical for their successful development. Right. So by the end of this, I mean, uh, by doing this uh, research, what we found is the simply saying there are the places where we receive a lot of we or salmon. Yeah, they receive a lot of influences from groundwater coming up from the riverbed, right? So this is where we did survey uh, Toyohiro River. You're familiar with this, and the Toyohiro River flows through the center of our Sapporo city, where nearly two million people live. So you can imagine how much human influences this river can uh, receive. But amazingly, in some locations, uh, this river is still receiving a substantial amount of groundwater dis recharge from the riverbed, which again cannot be see, seen by just you know from by looking at the river from the ground. And this water coming from these locations are very unique, and they are different in terms of water uh, chemistry and also temperature regime compared to the stream water. And then what we found is the, the locations where the salmon, they spawn, they lay eggs in cold winter period, 
uh, match exactly uh, with the locations of these groundwater uh, places. Okay. So which uh, s tells us that, okay, conservation of the groundwater system that provides a good habitat for salmon is very much uh, important, critically important, probably for maintaining their winter population. Right. <coughs> so here's another important message from me. Uh, publishing papers is a necessity to survive as a scientist, as our pr uh, professors told me repeatedly in the past. But I am uh, increasingly recognize the importance of practicing our cutting-edge uh, information, scientific knowledge to the public. Right? <laughs> so there are many ways, but one way of doing that is providing environmental education to the public. Okay? That way we can teach what is going on in our surrounding environment very uh, effectively. So in my lab at least, I urge most of my graduate students to participate in those kind of activities as much as possible and to share the knowledge with the general public. In conclusion, I'd like to stress three uh, points uh, regarding the, the management of river systems for future. Right? First of all, we should respect uh, nature. The nature, rivers, they know how they can su support a variety of uh, organisms. So we should set up the system in which rivers can do what they want to do as much as possible. And also secondly, uh, protecting, conserving everything is impossible and impractical. So we should prioritize our choice. So try to find out what is important compared to the others so we can do a better job. And at the end, <coughs> science can help us. Okay. There's a still large gap in our knowledge about the, how the river system works. So that needs to be filled up. So we need to continue, carry on our research. So if you are interested in doing this kind of work, I welcome you all warmly uh, to join our uh, team at the Hokkaido University. Thank you very much. <laughs>